It's the Daily Kebab. Greetings, Matanistas, and welcome to the Daily Kebab. If FIFA can provide you with four games of football a day, I can certainly provide you with two kebabs. So, we're going to have one early kebab and one late kebab. And whilst I'll certainly bring you such kebabs, I'm not going to dive straight into a donor or a grilled chicken kebab. I'm going for something a little bit more interesting, a true local speciality here called Cockeretch. And the name of the street store I've gone to here is called Cry Cockeretch, and this is actually an offal sandwich. I've never had this before, I don't know if they'll like it, but I do like offal. Of course, there's only one way to find out. I can't speak Turkish, not sure if they'll be able to speak English, but as always, I'll manage. And no shortage at all of juices coming out of this meat. <laughs> And in fact, some of those meaty juices were spread onto the bread. Now he's carving away at the offaly joint. I can see clearly that there's some tripe in here, but I'm not exactly sure what else is involved. Is this off beef or off lamb? Lamb. Uh, lamb. So it's all made out of lamb. Baby lamb. Baby lamb. Baby lamb. Yeah. Baby lamb. Some herbs and some sumac. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And to drink with that, mutton easters, we have obviously we all know that I like bottled water, and we have iran, which is a Turkish yogurt drink. It's not sweetened. Sometimes I think it can have a tiny amount of salt in. So in terms of consistency, halfway between yogurt and milk. Surprisingly refreshing as well, and I suspect it will complement the kebab perfectly. This is actually a dish or kebab I've been waiting to try for a long time, so here we go. Wells as wells as wells are so meaty, so juicy, so flavoursome. It's actually got all of the lambish flavours I love, so I'm in kebab heaven at the moment. And here's how it looks on the inside. It's something I reckon you must try, really, if you're in Istanbul. And the surroundings are actually pretty salubrious and clean around here. So don't worry about that so much. I've been to much, shall we say, iffier parts of the world in terms of eating street food. Now then, now then, mutton easters. Time to talk about football. And again, I'm afraid my predictions were not on the money for today's early matches. First of all, we had a 3 3 Humdinger between Serbia and Cameroon, and who would have guessed, given the dross both sides served up in the first match, that you'd get a game like this? Well, I suppose if I go for 3 3, it would be 0 0. I did even say yesterday, given my luck, it's likely that the game will be a massive goal fest simply because of my prediction. Anyway, it was an entertaining early game, but I think the draw is going to do neither team any good whatsoever. And then South Korea again. Next, Ghana. Well, I have to say, I wasn't far off there, and when Korea had pulled back a two-goal deficit to 2-2 in yet another entertaining game, I thought I was going to actually get one right on the money. Unfortunately, well, big deal, I suppose, Ghana scored a third goal, and they did well to pick themselves up after losing their two-goal lead and win 3-2. Korea had some moments towards the end and might have got it back. Unfortunately, again, I don't see either of these teams going through. And the outcome of this group is far from clear and I'll talk more about it after I've watched Portugal playing Uruguay. So why are the goals flying in today? If anybody thinks they know why, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'm going to go off and watch the last two games of the day and then bring you another kebab. Okay, Mutton Easter's a bit peckish again after watching the last two matches. And tonight I'm going to have obviously the kebab that is most recognised from Turkey, the Dona or Donna. I'm at a stall where they carve the Donners and people take wraps to eat on the street, but it's getting a bit parky, so I'm going to go inside and have one. Well, before the food arrives, Mutton Easter's, what 
a couple of controversial or interesting games we had now to finish the evening off. First of all, Brazil against Switzerland. Went the way I thought it would do, but Switzerland hung in there for a lot longer than I'd expected. Help that a goal was chalked off by VAR correctly. But I have to say, and maybe I'm wrong here, but I saw nothing from the commentators or what I read in the press reports just after the game about Manuel Akanji, and he is a City player. It looked to me as if it skimmed off his backside. He turned and twisted when, as we all know, he should have taken the ball full on. So I think he made an error there, but I may end up being stood corrected there. Who knows? Anyway, Switzerland didn't offer much going forward but they nearly got the point they were looking for. On then to Portugal against Uruguay and I had predicted 1-0 here, of course 2-0 in the Brazil game and these results were kind of flipped around and Uruguay took a while to get going but they started threading a few balls together and when they went 1-0 down, by the way after Ronaldo claimed a goal that he hadn't actually touched, it looked as if he'd taken the most delicate of touches and placed it perfectly in the corner but he just actually missed the goal and that penalty that Uruguay conceded, I mean how's the guy supposed to avoid his hand hitting the ball when he's going down under his own body weight, a terrible decision that was, probably didn't make much of a difference because it was scored so late because Portugal were 1-0 up with a few minutes of injury time left but it did mess up my prediction from being exactly correct. As for tomorrow's predictions, well, tomorrow we move to the third round of games and we start off with the group involving Qatar, who are out of it, who are playing against the Netherlands, who I think are going to stuff them, and Senegal playing against Ecuador, which will decide the other qualifier. Although if Ecuador win, it is of course possible that they end up topping the group. So in the first game, I think Holland will win, will we go 3-0? No, no, I'll go 4 I think they're going to thump Qatar, who seem to have alienated their home crowd, and the extra goals that Holland might procure could be what decides whether they win the group or come second. Then we have Senegal against Ecuador. This should be quite a competitive game, and either side could qualify. If the match is a draw, that means that Ecuador will qualify, because they're on four points and Senegal on three, and I actually think Ecuador will edge the game 2-1 anyway. Although Senegal can look good going forward, they didn't offer anything against the Dutch. And I see a little bit of sloppiness at the back, not least from Edward Mendy, who made two bad mistakes when they were about to draw against Holland. And then the group I'm most interested in, England's group. England are playing Wales, and in the other match, the USA are playing Iran. Now, England are basically through unless they lose 4-0 to Wales. Wales either need to do that or win and hope that the other game is a draw. I don't see either of those things happening. I think Wales will put in a gallant effort, but England will end up running away with it 2-0. And in the other game, well, I expect that's going to be quite a tight affair, but I predicted that the USA would come second in this group and I'm going to stand by that prediction with a 1-0 win to the United States. Anyway, my food has arrived. I wasn't sure whether to have chicken donner or lamb donner, and I wasn't sure how big these wraps were going to be, so in the usual mutton style, I ordered both. So I might only eat half of both. But, down to the table. Did I say lamb there? Did I? I don't know. It's beef anyway. The beef is the meat of choice for donner over here, which is obviously something that sets it apart from what we get in the UK. Although, obviously, they have lots of other kebabs involving lamb. And to drink with this, of course, we've got our usual duo of Iran, the yoghurt drink, and a bottle of cold water. Now, for those of you wondering whether I could drink alcohol with this, not in this place. Maybe I'm in a part of the city that's a bit more Islamic. Anyway, you can get booze here, you just have to look for it. And to be honest, the restaurants that have it, they'll have it pretty prominently displayed. So, first, the chicken. Mm. 
Now, I wouldn't want to go around saying that I found the best ever place for a donor or a chicken donor, but the point is it was near the bar or cafe, moreover, where I watched the match. So I've just gone for convenience because it's midnight at the moment. And it looked okay in terms of the juiciness of the meat on the spit. Because as we know, Matanista's dry is bad and a dry donna would be a disaster. But that's pretty good, actually. The chicken's pretty moist. And what they do here is that I think they introduce the bread very briefly to the fat of the meat on the skewer. And there's no, actually no sauce in this kebab. And sauces, in particularly in donners, is something that they just don't do here. They rely on the quality and juice of their meat to make the kebab moist. In Maintenon, the beef... Yeah, so that again is pretty juicy. I can understand why bread has been introduced to the meat juices and the meat is moist and juicy. The sauce isn't that important. There is a bit of salad in there, which I think is important for this sort of thing. And if you want a wrap, with the wrap being what you consider to be a kebab in the UK, as in wrapped in bread, you want a durum, D-U-R-U-M, to be a durum wheat wrap. Usually if you ask for a kebab, it means you'll get a plated kebab with some bread and rice and chips and stuff like that. Anyway folks, time to wrap things up. Really excited by the prospect of England playing tomorrow. Let's hope Southgate doesn't throw another massive wet blanket over it all. And I've had a really exciting first day in Istanbul. Anyway, tomorrow's another day. Hope I'll be able to bring you some different and delicious kebabs, but for now, Matanistas, that was your daily kebab. <laughs>